there we go okay well uh good morning everyone this is uh this is gonna give you lecture on chapter two and i will also lecture on chapter three uh, chapter two, we're going to talk about safety in medication administration, which is one of the first topics that we want to touch uh, when it comes to medication med math, uh, because all of the whole idea of this med um, safe medication dosage and calculations is so that we can ensure that we are doing this appropriately. So we're going to talk about safety on medication administration, and and just so you just so you know, uh, this is something like I think most of you guys are in the nursing major. So um, we are, uh, as nurses and healthcare providers, we are responsible for, administ for medication administration and, to, and we're responsible to make this uh, appropriately uh, to provide safety to the patients. And it is a responsibility, it's part of our scope of practice. Uh, there are some organizations that are uh, in charge of making sure that the safety in medication administration is done appropriately. Um, the two organizations that you need to remember and always, you know, memorize and remember is the, the one that is on a national level and the other one is in a local organization level. Uh, the first one is the IOM, which is the Institute of Medicine, and the other one is the Institute of um, Safe Medication Practices, which is known as the ISMP. And of course, we have the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission, it's kind of like our, our board. It, they're the ones that make sure that we, that we practice appropriately and that we are providing safety for the community. So they, the, the whole purpose for this organization is that uh, the healthcare providers um, go based on specific guidelines that we follow practices. And the whole goal for this is that there is a reduction of medication errors and also, uh, not only the medication errors, but it also makes us aware that medications can cause adverse reactions, and we can prevent them, you know, from from this uh, guidelines that they that they have for us to follow. Okay, so this is a responsibility of the healthcare provider, responsibility of us as nurses, and uh, the what what do they do? What do these organizations do? Well, they, they create all of these norms and guidelines, like I said, so that we can be aware because there are so many medications and they're making more, you know, as I'm speaking, there's so many medications names that are, you know, continue to, or they're on trials. There are so many. So there has to be some sort of a norm that would give us some awareness to this. Um, and as you can see here, those, um, um, are some of the most uh, common, you know, things that could lead into uh, errors, medication errors. So the the IOM and the and the Institute of Safe Medication Practices as well, the ISMP, they make um, this um, effort to bring awareness to us. Okay, so they what they do is that in the medications or the medication books, the drug books, they put. At high alert, you know, like medications that are high alert or that are controlled medications or medications that, you know, have a, a strong adverse effects. They give us that awareness. They give us like some sort of signs, uh, symbols so that we can recognize all of this. Okay. Uh, that's one thing to prevent the, you know, high alert medications. Also, the there are many medications and many, many symbols and things that we write uh, and in an abbreviation. Uh, that can also uh, put us at risk of making a medication error. So they they also give us the awareness of what symbols to use, what not to use, abbreviations, and also uh, dosage designations. Uh, also, uh, there are medications that can be very confusing. I don't know if you guys have you know seen names of medications that they sound alike, look and they sound alike, and you can write them, and they you know they you can write them pretty much alike as well. So uh, a lot of medications that can be easily confused in the field, and you know it could it could lead into uh, uh, something um, fatal. Okay, so uh, talking a little, a uh, little bit more on each of those individual awareness um, uh, factors. It's the high alert medication again. So uh, any medication that is out there, any medication that is out there that has an increased risk for causing patient harm. Okay, it doesn't, you know, matter what 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 it is, but if it could be harmful to the patient to the point that it can be life threatening, 
uh, it's a high alert medication, okay? So the ISMP uh, actually gives you a list of medications. If you go onto their website, there's a list of medications, but like I said, it's just way too many medications. Uh, we always follow a drug book, you know, like a, like a drug uh, guidebook. And when we look at the medication, as you can see here, this is exactly how it looks in our drug book. Um, and then it tells you high alert. You know, this is a high alert medication. This is fentanyl. I don't know if you guys have heard, but this is like a really strong um, uh, opioid medication. And they use it for other purposes too. You know, like it's for chronic severe pain, but um, it has a high alert. So normally it would have that signal, that symbol, I mean, the sorry, that it would have that alert there for you to recognize uh, before you even give it to the patient, okay? Um, and then here we have a list of the most um, uh, error prone abbreviations that you could that you could um, do, you know, as you're documenting or writing things down. Uh, this is something I also want you guys, you guys need to memorize this because these abbreviations can lead into dangerous um, uh, results on the patient, okay? So uh, do not use trailing zeros. For example, if you have a five milligram, five milligram, you are never supposed to put 5.0. And the reason is if they don't see this, this decimal point, it can easily go from five to 50. So that could be that could be a big issue, especially in those medications that there are some medications that the dosages are really small because they're really strong. So you can actually give 10 times you know, that dose. Uh, also, um, you do wanna use leading uh, zeros for doses that are less, if it's less than one, than one whole number. If it's less than one whole, whole number, for example, here we have five, you just leave it at five. You just leave it at five milligrams. But if you have a point less than one whole number, if you have a 0.3, you never write it as 0.3 only. And as you can see, if I put the cursor there, it can really, it can easily be mistaken from a 0 0.3 to a three uh, milligrams. So that's like 10 times more than the actual dose. So these are things that have happened, you guys. Uh, so whenever it's less than the one unit of measurement, you do want to add that zero and the decimal there. Okay. That's the right way to write it. Uh, other examples are here, like this is an MCGs. These are micrograms. Uh, so, so it's the orders 0.5. So you never write it, you know, like all together like that, because it can also lead into giving more to the patient or less in some cases. Okay. Same thing for units. And we'll go more in depth in, in this later on, but uh, units is another one. Uh, there are several medications that their unit of measurement comes in units instead of milligrams or milliliters. So if you get something that says 30 units, uh, you never write it uh, with a U. And this is something that used to be done before, you know, in nursing and practice, in medical practices, they used, they used to write 30U. But now it could, it could easily be missed, uh, missed uh, by a zero and it could look like a 300. So, so never use the U next to it, like I said, and, and write the whole name unit, okay? We have some other examples here of other uh, dangerous abbreviations or the use of symbols that could lead into errors. And like I said, this happens often in the, in the, in, in the field. It, ha it happens often in the field. So as we're trying to minimize this, uh, they, they came up with this, you know, with this list that we follow. Uh, uh, from what I know, both hospitals, they also, I mean, everywhere, everywhere national wise, they, they follow this, um, um, the, the do not abbreviate this uh, specific designations. So uh, an example here that you could that you could see CCs. I don't know if you guys have heard this, but we used to uh, call it CCs. Um, before. I mean, we don't we no longer call it that like that. We call it MLs. This is for milliliters. You know, abbreviation for milliliters. You want to use the always the lowercase for the M, and the and the uppercase for the L, because that's the the unit the unit base. Um, so do not write CC because that could misread as a as a U or different or, or different and, and it could lead into another error. Okay, so this is again heparin. Uh, if you have a number that's like in this case that is 5,000, 
uh, you want to uh, put that comma there. You want to add that comma instead of putting the whole 5,000, okay? This could lead into missed uh, zeros or adding more zeros to that, okay? So in this particular cases, you do want to add the comma. Penicillin here, this is a common dose, actually, the penicillin, the 1.5. Uh, we write it as 1.5 million instead of putting all the zeros here. Okay, and it takes a while, you guys, to memorize this, but uh, there, um, uh, it really helps when you read the reason why and how it can, you know, mis be misread. So, and you will see in, in other labels that the penicillin, for example, it does, you know, if it's more than 1 million, you want to just, uh, instead of adding uh, the whole bunch of uh, zeros, because this can easily be mistaken as well. Okay, that's with the uh, abbreviations. Then these are some names or medications names that could be easily uh, misread as well. So the ISMP uh, knows, and they rec and they have you know there's multiple multiple names that can sound alike, look alike, or when you write them when you write them as well, they're pretty similar. Uh, and you have a couple of labels here that you can see Novolog. No, this is a this is an insulin, you guys. Novolog and Novolin, they're both insulins. There are different types of insulin. So if you uh, misread and, you, and if you can see the mix is the same, 70-30, 70-30. So Novolog and Novolin. So there, these are type of medications that have a high potential uh, for being confused. And they can, it can be um, insulin. You know, if it's an insulin that you're, you're meant to give it, uh, there's some insulins that are meant to act within 15 minutes. Uh, versus other ones that they start acting in your body an hour later. So if it's not for the right intention, it can it can really harm the patient. Okay. So that confusion of drug names that's a, that's another. And then we have the tall the tall man lettering. Uh, so the tall man lettering this is uh, uh, something that the ISPM they they came up with this uh, idea to give awareness to the nurses. Uh, from those medications that they kind of like end up uh, in the same or they could start the same, you know, the same way that with the same or they sound alike when you they sound alike when you say the name. Uh, uh, so what they did is that they they uh, write down in capital the tall man lettering. They write they write down in capital the the portion of the name of the of the drug name that could be similar to another one that so that to, just like, OK, if I see that I'm like. Oh, okay, okay, dopamine. So, so dopamine, dobutamine. So they kind of like sound a little bit alike. So you don't want to make a mistake between those two. So, so whenever you see the tall men lettering, that's what it means. That means that they're trying to highlight that specific section of the medication that might be confusing. Uh, uh, and it helps you distinguish it even, you know, more. So whenever you see that, that's what it means. And the tall men lettering, it could be at the end of the drug name, or it could be at the beginning as well. Normally, you will not see tall men lettering in the in between, like in the middle. It's always in the uh, at the beginning or at the end. Okay, that that's what the tell the tall men lettering is. Then we have the black box warnings. Okay, so the the medications that uh, have a black uh, black box warning are medications that have been uh, that have been mandated by the FDA. And I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about the FDA with the COVID vaccines and everything. So if the if the Food and, Food and Drug Administration, they mandate that this medication or this specific medication uh, carries, carries a, 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 or, or the medication could cause a significant adverse effects on the patient. Okay. Again, it can harm the patient, and the and the and the the adverse effect could be even life threatening, uh, or it could be it could lead into something really you know serious on the patient. So they fall in the black box warning. Okay. So whenever you see those medications, you're gonna you're gonna see that they have some sort of warning in there, and sometimes it doesn't say black box warning. It it just gives you a warning, uh, and it's there in like big letters. Um, in the hospitals, uh, this is a label right here, but in the hospitals and even in home health, when I work in home health, uh, whenever I enter a medication in, the, in my medication uh, reconciliation list, 
if I enter a medication and the medication has a block, a black box warning, it'll pop up right away. And, uh, and it gives me that awareness. That's something that's super cool that they have also done and established in the, in the electronic systems now. Same thing in the hospital. When I'm going to pull the medication from the from the Pixis or the, the machine, when I'm gonna pull the medication, it, it says this medication has a black box warning. So I have to go ahead and read that warning so that I know what, you know, what could cost to the patient, okay? So that's something that you would see on the label or in the packet. You guys, have you guys seen when you, when you get a medication, it has like this big old, like this big old piece of paper with tiny, tiny, small letters that have all this, all these warnings and information. So that's, those are pretty much the, the most common things that could uh, create the most common uh, causes that could create uh, errors. And, um, and like I said, we have uh, these organizations that they are on, on back of it. They're trying to like, you know, they're staying to, they're, they're to bring up awareness to nurses, okay? So now let's talk about medication administration process. So, like I said, we are responsible, you know, for the medication administration. So we have to make sure and, and, and ensure that we are doing it safely and that we are following the right practices. Okay. And by that, I mean that I have to make sure that, you know, that I check this medication and that, uh, that it's, the medication is written correctly, that the doctor is giving me the order and I'm following uh, uh, making sure that I'm doing the right medication for my right patient. There's something else that, that needs to be done as well, following the six rights of medication administration. And I'll tell you what those are in the next couple of slides. So we have to always, with every medication that we administer, we have to follow the six rights of medication administration, that it's also um, a, a good uh, guideline for us to, to prevent other type of errors, like giving it, maybe you're following everything else, but you gave it to the wrong patient or, you know, like, or you gave it the wrong way, the wrong route. So it happens. Uh, and then also understanding the routes of medication administration. Okay. So when you get an order, a doctor's order, for example, and right now we get all of our orders, we get them um, electronically. So most of them, we get them electronically and the doctor comes in and they place the order. Boom, 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 you know, right away. So then the order goes into the pharmacy. So when a doctor comes in and this, this pictures, you guys, they're pretty much, they're pretty much the way that it, that it looks in both hospitals. And even in the, in my tablet, uh, from when I see my patients in home health, if I receive an order, it's the same way, maybe just different colors, but the one to the left here, this is the electronic medical record. So in the electronic medical record, that's where the, where, the, where, where the doctors write their orders, okay? If the doctor rounds and goes to the patient, then now the doctors, they come in and they place the order, or sometimes they give us the orders and we write them, we, we put them down in the computer. But for the most part, our doctors are, are going into, you know, they see their patient and they place their or, the orders themselves. So this is an example of how it looks in the computer. So it has the patient's name, the age, the, you know, all of that. Uh, important uh, patient information, the allergies, the room number, the doctor that's ordering, the date and the time. So the order will look like, like this, uh, aldactone, 50 milligrams, P-O-Q-A-M. And for those of you that have taken medical terminology, uh, this is a uh, medication's 50 milligrams per oral, so it's by mouth, uh, every morning, right? That's, the, that's what you need in, a, in, a doctor, in, a, in an order. So once that medication has been send over to the pharmacy then it's already been you know transcribed to the pharmacy this is how it's going to look for the uh, we call it the medical um, the medical reconciliation or the medical uh, record the the patient's medical record which is a, a m a r right here this is how it's going to look for me uh, a schedule at 10 o'clock in the morning the medication the the dose the route and the frequency right and then it has the time so basically that's, you know, gives you an idea of how it looks. You have to make sure though, that when a doctor writes an order that it has the, the medication name, the dosage, the route, the route has to be always, always, and the frequency of the medication, okay? So these are the patient, the patient's uh, six rights that we have to follow every single time we administer a medication, okay? So these are for you guys to memorize. These are not for, you have to follow this uh, all the time. 
So you have to make sure that you're given the right medication, that is the right dose, that you're giving it the right route. That means, you know, is it gonna be oral, sublingual, rectal? Uh, is it the right time or frequency, uh, the right patient? And then you wanna document it correctly as well, okay? So you have to memorize those and those will, uh, you'll be, you know, when I make the exams, you'll be tested on those. Uh, so this gives you some of the, uh, well, it doesn't give you some of them. It gives you all the different types of uh, routes of administration on your patients. So you, you guys have, you can see the oral, buccal, sublingual. This is a uh, uh, parenteral. Parenteral is anything that's being, it's being uh, administered directly into the system or like injections, subcutaneous, intramuscular, intravenous. We have others, others uh, uh, like inhalation, you know, like breathing, the breathing treatments, nasal, uh, the eyes, the ears, you know, there's, there's different types of routes. So every single medication that if you see an order, you need to have the route of administration. It needs to be there, okay? So let's do a problem. Um, and for this, I think you guys can, um, can you guys help me identify the safety information that, uh, that it's uh, in, in the drug uh, label and reference? Or let's just, uh, let's see, black box warning. Is there a black, black box warning on the drug label? Do you guys see? Do you guys see a warning there? Yes. Okay. And we have a warning here, right? Very good. Do you guys see tall man lettering on the drug label? I know Hannah, Hannah is typing it. Okay. So, nope. Okay. Very good. There's no tall man lettering. Uh, how about the unit of measurement? Uh, that should be written in milligrams. Do you see that? right there, right? Okay, very good. So um, that's one, let's try another one. Let me erase my, okay. So let's see, do you guys see a black box warning in here? In that label? You guys can speak if you want. Okay, Nicole says no, okay. Okay, yeah, no. Nope. Uh, do you guys see tall man lettering on the on this um, label? No. 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 Okay. And then, uh, how about a high an alert? Do you guys see a high alert uh, on the drug reference? And when I say the the if you see, if I'm saying drug label, I'm referring to, to the drug label. And if I'm referring to the drug reference, this is what's on the literature. The drug, le the drug le uh, reference, that's what you guys will see on that book. There's a book that we have that's pretty thick and it's pretty much every medication is in that book. So, so that's, the, that's when we mean, the when I say the literature or the drug reference, that's what I mean. So do we see a high alert? in there, but it's right there, right? We do see one. How about the abbreviation? The abbreviation, uh, uh, MCG for micrograms, does that look correct? MCG for micrograms? Yes, yes it does, right? Okay. So, very good. So that's, you know, that's kind of like how we, you know, we will start, you know, learning how to get and read these labels uh, um, making sure, you know, everything that's in the, in the label. So the name, of course, we see, we see the name of the medication as we saw in the previous label. Uh, you can see, you can see the, let me go back. Um, so we can see that label. Let's go to this one. You see the name of the medication. Uh, you're also able to see the strength, like right here. I can see the strength of the medication, right? 
and the form uh what's the form what do you guys what do you guys understand by the form the strength is in milligram it's in mcgs right or you know the it's telling me there but what is the form can somebody tell me what's the form of the medication tablets 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 right yeah i'm talking about tablets sometimes we're talking about capsules you know it it, it, it what is, how does it come into like liquid uh what you know like what 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 is the form of it uh the route <clears throat> the route uh the route for sure has to be in the doctor's orders okay and 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 then uh when it comes to drug labels the route it, it could be in multiple places in the label but if we're talking about tablets or capsules it's very it's very common that you're not going to see that it says oral okay because by tablets and capsules and we can we can assume that it's going to be oral so don't be surprised if in some labels you don't see the that it says oral when it's talking about tablets okay uh also in the label you're going to see if there's any alerts or warnings and there there's also other information that could also be included in a label um such as the can you guys tell me what else is it, could you guys find in a label or that you have seen in a label besides what i just mentioned And that's okay nobody uh, if it's if it's single dose multi-dose very good perhaps. yeah sometimes like those vaccines right the vaccines sometimes are single dose uh, and if, and and multi-dose you know the multi-dose it will be you know for for multiple so that has to be there and it does say in there anything else you guys how about the temperature where do you store it right where where, where can you put this is it in the fridge is it under room temperature does it need to be frozen or we you know what are you going to do with it afterwards how are you going to keep it uh, where are you going to store it uh and there's also uh, a lot sometimes you know you will see the lot number in there and also the manufacturer who's doing the who's doing this um the the pharma the pharmaceutical company that is doing the 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 medication as well okay and just so you know, the lot, uh, oh, the expiration date, how about that? The expiration date has to be there. It needs to be there. And that is something that we have to check all the time. Um, I was opening a crash car, I mean, a while back, and I found all of and, and we're trying to stay on top of it all the time, you know, like, but, uh, well, the pharmacy goes and checks those, the crash cars, you know, when our patients are really sick and we have to uh, um, get all this emergency medication. Sometimes we don't open open this crash cars as often as the emergency room does. So some medications in there get old and like like and you know we have to update them. So so that's a big you know issue. You know like if you administer something that is expired. So we have to look into that as well. Uh, the lot number the lot number we really don't document it unless it's a vaccine. That's when we know, like just recently, you know, there was a, a bad batch of vaccines that were given in San Diego or something. So they were like, no, 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 don't give this, this, this batch. They were going by the lot number. So, so here we go, the components of the drug label. So the name, the strength, the route, any warnings, and all of that additional information that we just talked about. Uh, uh, other other uh, things that we need to know is the name of the medications, right? So we in nursing and actually in, in the healthcare system, uh, medical, uh, we go by, by generic names. And that's what you guys will eventually have to learn. You have to learn both, but everything is by generic name. That's the universal. That's the universal way of identifying medications, okay? There's, a, of course, you know, the brand name, we're talking about who, you know, like if they bought like the laboratory, they they are not the laboratory, the the companies that have uh, taken care, they're the trade name, you know, they 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 have purchased that. So they normally a brand name will be followed by a symbol. You're gonna see like the generic name and then and then under uh, or on the top the brand name, and then there's a little symbol next to it. So that's how you know that's the brand name. And for uh, testing purposes. And in pharmacology too, we also we always go by generic name, okay. And also for NCLEX, NCLEX testing, uh, when they when they give you questions, there if they give you medications, they're gonna be generic names. So the more you come across them, you, the more you'll memorize them. There's something else that we need to know on the label, and that is the the USP mark. 
and the USP mark, it's a, it's a measure of standard. The, um, they normally call it a um, US pharmac pharmacopoeia, pharmacopoeia. And what it means is that uh, medications that have already met the standards and the quality of the strength, and, and, and they have been already tested. So they are recognized by the United States pharmacopoeia. And you will see that medications have the USP next to it. And I think I do have um, a sample. I'll give you a sample in a little bit. So, um, so anyway, so the generic name and then the brand name and then the medications will also follow with the USP mark. Those medications that have been recognized, like I said. Uh, so now let's talk about the dosage strength. Okay, the dosage strength that's made out of two parts. Okay, one is the, the strength of the medication, you know, how like uh, uh, the strength in this particular case, you see the 25 there. Uh, that's the strength. And then the second part is the number of, you know, what's the form, the form of the medication? How, what is it coming to? Like in the previous uh, label, we said it was tablet. In this, in this particular label, it's the strength is 25 milligrams and every five mLs. So the form of, of the drug is now in liquid, right? You guys follow me there? Yes. So that's the kind of like the specific, you know, what's the form and, and what is it, um, how does it come into? Okay. Okay. Oops, I saved the picture. Um, uh, okay, so let's see a little bit more about the dose of strength. Uh, we see, uh, when I say parenteral, that's, you know, that's, it's going to be injected or given directly, you know, intravenously. So those type of medications, they might have other forms of dosage strength. So every time I say dosage strength, it's going to be, you know, like, what's the, like, for example, 25 milligrams in one tablet. So the, the dosage, the strength and the form. Okay. So right here, you see that some parenteral medications, they have more than one dosage strength. So what happens with this, as you can see here, this is one dosage strength, this is another one, okay? So basically they're giving you a conversion there. It's a conversion so that you can, you can as a nurse, you know, as a provider, you can choose whichever of the two is more convenient. If my patient needs to get 12 milligrams or, you know, something that's closer to the 12, I'm gonna use this top one to, as a conversion, right? Or if my patient needs a smaller dose, a smaller doses than that, then I'm just gonna go by the, by the three milligrams per per mL. So basically, that they give that to you to make it easier, but it's up to you to choose either one. Both ways, when you do your your dosage calculation, it should give you the same the same answer. But it just you know it kind of like um, uh, minimizes the the problem. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Another thing that you would see on the on the labels, on the drug labels, is that in some medications, it says in the label again, in the back, you're gonna see uh, the there are uh, medications that they give a lot, like Tylenol, Tylenol and Motrin. You guys have seen that when you turn it, you know, the back of it, you can see what the use the usual dosage is, right? Or the dosage and use, or what the indications are. There are some medications that are just, you know, they they they're pretty common and you don't need a doctor, you know, like mo all the time to like, oh, I'm going to get Motrin. So you, you guys know that a usual dosage for Tylenol could be 500 milligrams, right? So if you look in the back of the, there's a little table that tells you what's the usual or, or some indications there. Um, so you will see some, some um, uh, medications that have that labeled as well. Okay. So that's what's typically given pretty much. And sometimes if it's not there in the in the label, you can find that in the packet. And when I said the packet insert is that big old, is that little piece of paper that just keeps on folding and unfolding. And sometimes it's huge and it gives you all kinds of information there. So you, you could also find it there. So let's get, a, let's do this one. Let's do this practice problem. Um, I don't know how many people do I have here, but uh, can somebody tell me what's the brand name of this medication? This is a blood pressure medication. Norvasc. Yes, correct. Norvasc is the, and you can see, how do you know that's the brand name? Um, because it's in bold. 
it's in bold and then it has the little symbol next to it right and it has the generic right below it and then it has the generic yep and the generic will be in parentheses uh, below when you have both brand name and generic name the generic is going to be in parentheses in the in the right below and the and the trade will have the little symbol that i told i told you about so okay so the generic is amlodipine so by that i mean that there could be more medications you know different brand names but the medication you know it, it could be the same uh and that's how, something that happens with insurances too sometimes it's like you know, they only get the generic and you guys have seen that generic so it seems cheaper than if you get it from the brand name. Okay. Can you guys tell me what's the laboratory? Uh, the laboratory that manufactures this? Pfizer Labs. Pfizer, yes. Okay. Uh, so now let's see the dosage strength. What's the, do you remember this composed of two parts? 10 milligrams per tablet. Uh -huh, correct. So it is the first part is the 10 milligrams and then per tablet. This is how we write it, or you can put per and then tablet. Oh, my writing cell phone sometimes, uh, all the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> so 10 milligrams per tablet. So I'm bringing this up because when we start doing uh, med math uh, problems, in the answers, we always want the, the, you know, both parts to be present. So if I tell you, you know, how many milligrams uh, or what's the dosage strength of that, you can, and if you say 10 milligrams only, well, that's going to be wrong because you have to give me the second portion, you know, have to tell me 10 milligrams per tablet. So um, just so you guys um, know, let's do another one. Uh, can somebody tell me the brand name? Metro. Metro, uh-huh. And the generic? Methylprednisolone. Yeah, methylprednisolone. That's a, a corticosteroid. Um, it, you know, to open up, it's an anti-inflammatory and also opens up the airway. So there's multiple pur purposes for this. So there is also solumedrol, you know, like there's different names that could be given to this. Uh, and the dosage strength, guys, can you tell me the dosage strength? Eight milligrams per tablet. Per tablet. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's go to another problem. I mean, another, <clears throat> the other portion of the lecture. Uh, so now let's talk about the route. Okay. So like I said, oral, you know, like the, when it's oral or that's the route, you will not typically see that it says oral and the label. And that is because I told you like, it's, you know, it's understood that tablets, capsules, and, and, and um, others, you know, the, the like oral, they, it, would, it will not be there. It will not be there in, in most of the labels. So don't, don't get scared. It does have to be though in the doctor's order, okay? It does have to be in the doctor's order. So that's an example of that. Just if you see tablets, that's because it's going to be oral. Uh, and when it comes to parenteral routes, uh, like injected, you know, or I, you know, IV or in, injected in, 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 in um, parenteral, uh, the uh, routes of administration are specifically written. They have to be there in those particular cases. If it's parenteral, it has to say, like in here it says for IV or IM injections or IV infusion, okay? So sometimes, you know, it says, it says uh, for IV, so it cannot be injected. So, so you have to, it has to specifically say there if this is a medication that we can actually give it into the mus into the muscle or not. Okay, or if it can be uh, IV, you know, IV push, IV injection, and IV infusion. So that has to be written in the label. Okay, that's that has to. Okay, so uh, going back to the black box warning, like I said, that's a indication of adverse uh, or life-threatening um, result on the patient. And that is, um, it's now, it's mandated by, by the FDA that it's, that the medications that are black box warning, they have to have the, the they have to have this warning alert in there. That's why I said like in hospitals and electronic medical systems, uh, they have to have them and, and they have to buy like really, you know, um, good, databases so that they can you know recognize this type of medications and you would see that that it appears in the label there's some sort of warning here 
Okay. Then we also have, uh, who would have thought, huh, all of these things in a drug label. Uh, you guys can also see by looking at a drug label, if the medication is controlled, it's a controlled substance, or if the medication is um, uh, um, um, a schedule, you know, like if it's, if it's uh, the, the, what that means, the controlled substances or the, the Romal numeral, numerical numbers that you see in there is the, how those medications are at high risk of becoming uh, dependent or, the, you know, the person can become dependent to it uh, or not. So the lower the number, the higher the higher the, the control substance is, okay? So I have an example here, uh, it says morphine. So morphine, you will see that uh, it has the US pharmacopoeia uh, uh, approval there. And then you see the C for control. And then you see the numerical numbers in, in the inside. So that's a two, okay? So it is a strong opioid. And you want to know that that the use of that medication could lead into um, misuse, or you know, the person can become um, addicted to the medication. So you have to be, you have to use that medication cautiously. Okay. So a lot of medications will have that controlled uh, substance uh, sign, and we have to be aware of those. Okay. And then what uh, one of you guys just mentioned uh, a little while ago. Another thing that it's also included in parenteral medications, it's that if the medication is a single dose or, or a multi-dose, okay? Uh, the difference in both, if you're, in case you're wondering, uh, single dose medications, normally they don't have preservatives. They don't have uh, all of these other chemicals to keep it from, uh, you know, getting any bacteria inside of the vial. Since it's a one-time use vial, they're just gonna, you know, insert the needle and then get the medication and just give it and that's it. Discard the rest. So, so if you have that, if you have that, that you have like half or more than half in the vial left after you gave one dose, if it doesn't say multi-dose, you have to discard it because it does not have preservatives and chances are is that it's gonna build bacteria, okay? So, and then the multi-use, it does have uh, preservatives in there that, you know, uh, it can be it can be puncture multiple sites because of the preservatives that it has. Okay, so that's that has to be indicated there in the label. Okay, so you see right there it says single dose vial. Okay, and then that's an ex that's a sample of the um, multi multi uh, dose, and you can see it says. There's 100 milligrams per each ml, and that is a 10 ml. It's a 10 ml vial, so it's pretty, you know, it's pretty big. It can be used multiple times. Okay, so and then the storage and the expiration date. You will see this label. Um, it has the it says to store the dry powder below 86 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and then uh, for I don't know if you guys, if there's any moms there or anybody that's taking oral antibiotics that, that you have to, <clears throat> that you have to um, reconstitute the, the medication with, you know, you have to add water to it. Once you add the water to it, it says once it has been added, the medication has to be kept, you know, like in the refrigerator uh, or room temperature, depending. And it's good. And it's good for two weeks after reconstituted, it's only good for two weeks. So, so after two weeks, you have to discard it despite the expiration date that it says there. So it could say 2022, but if you already reconstitute it, it's, you're gonna go by, by for how long is that good for, okay? So we have to pay particular attention to those details. That way, you know, sometimes they store it in warm, in warm areas. And, and uh, remember antibiotics are kind of like the good bacteria. So you don't wanna keep them too warm either or, or get the temperature, um, at abnormal levels, because um, then they cannot be good for that purpose that you intend them to uh, in the first place, okay? Other information that you will see is that in your label, sometimes it says the total amount, it says 25 tablets, 10 tablets, or 100 ml uh, in total in, in the container, you know, in the container or vial. Uh, like I said, the lot number, it's also used uh for vaccinations only that's the only place where i have to make sure I, I i add that lot number uh and then the manufacturer's name it's always on the drug label so be careful not to get that confused with the drug name or the trade name okay 
and other information. Um, oh, well, right here is telling you the laboratory. That's the laboratory. That's the, it's just an example. And then it gives you the example that this one has 100, the lot number, and then um, the, the manufacturer. Okay, so let's work this problem, you guys. This, this says, which of the following components are included in the drug label? So in the drug label that you see right there, do we have a brand name? Yes, Dilantin. Mm -hmm. Do we have a generic? Yes. Tablet. Yes, we do. Do we have a total amount? Yes. 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 It's right here. Uh, how about a lot number? Doody doody. I don't see one. Do you guys? I don't. No, there's no lot number. Uh, there's an expiration date. How about a dosage strength? Yes. Mm -hmm. How about an expiration date? Yes. And the route of administration? Well, I mean, we know it's capsule, so we know it's oral. Right? Very good. So let's, uh, let's work on this one. Mm -hmm. What's the drug form of this medication? It's a tablet, route mm -hmm. of administration, oral, uh, dosage strength, 40 milligrams per tablet. Mm -hmm. Is a total amount, is that the number of tablets? Mm -hmm. 90. Do not see the black box warning. Me either. Mm -hmm. uh, and lettering. I just noticed bold, uppercase, uh, no lowercase with it. Okay. Does it look like a controlled substance? No. No. And. Um, in peroxetine. Peroxetine, that's actually the that generic. So there's no brand name. So that peroxetine, it's the it's an antidepressant. So you might see uh, there's different brand names for peroxetine. So it's not a it's a generic. So very good. Um Ms. Bravo, can you explain to me what tall man lettering is? I kind of joined a little late and I think I missed that. Yeah, the Tolman lettering, it's when uh, we have medications that either sound alike, look alike, or when you write them, they seem pretty similar. So to avoid that confusion, what they do, uh, what the, 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 this uh, um, mandating our organizations that we have, you know, taking, making sure that we do it, that we um, administer medications correctly, uh, I'm going back to show you the the Tolman lettering, hold on, over right here. So um, they, they uh, to, in order to prevent these medications that look alike, sound alike, or they can be written similarly, they put in capital letters, they, they capitalize the letters to kind of like give you, like highlight those letters that might, that might sound similar or look similar, okay? So whenever you see a medication name that has the, the capitalized letters, you're gonna know, oh, there's another medication that sounds, or it could be confused with this one. So you wanna be you know, uh, vigilant of that so that you know, and can be, and be able to distinguish them. You will see the Talman lettering either at the beginning or at the end, never in the, cent never in the middle. You, you will see that they're, they're, they'll be more in the beginning or end, as you see in the, in the slide there, okay? Okay. And then I think, I was going to give you another problem. We're almost done on this. Hold on. It was right here. We did, we do, we did that one, right? Let's do one more. What's the brand name? 
brand name Zadvan. Mm -hmm. Generic name Norazepam. The route and this it could be I am. It could be I am and IV, no? I see both. I am means intramuscular. IV, it's intravenous. So it can be injected or given in a, it could be injected in the muscle or IV. The dosage strength. So we know that's per day. per 10 ml. Mm -hmm. And then uh, do we have a black box uh, warning? Anything that says warning? No. Uh, do we have tall men lettering? No. Okay. Is this a controlled substance? Yes. Okay. And it's a controlled substance for, right? Yes. Okay. And then the storage information. Yes, stored in a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So you guys are able to read, you know, the um, the most important parts that we look into uh, when it comes to medications and drug labels. Okay. Any questions on this? This is the chapter. This is chapter two. Um, do you guys have any questions? Oh, okay. Let me stop the recording real quick so I can jump into the other chapter. You guys want to take a little break? Or should we just go straight? 